You know, when it comes to the challenging situation of trying to transport an ever-increasing family, I feel like some people fight this reality that they've created for themselves and they buy a seven-seat SUV. Look, yes, they are sexier than a people mover, but things can quickly turn disastrous as you run out of cargo space the more you pump out kids. However, other people seem to embrace the fact that they've now just become a taxi service for their kids and their friends and happily buy a people mover. This, the Toyota Velfire, might very well be the ultimate people mover. Or is it? Because it is a Japanese import and it's very expensive. So is it worth seriously considering? Let's find out. Now, just before we go on, a massive thank you to WiperTech for supporting this video. More on those guys and how you can save some money later on. Firstly, as well as being the sensible choice of transport for a family, these things are often used to transport politicians, celebrities, heads of industry around Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo. Like, they're not that popular here in Australia yet, but they're hugely popular all across Asia. In fact, they're so popular, they have a twin called the Alphard. Talk about Toyota pulling the awesome names out for these two. Anyway, the Velfire is marketed as like the sportier version of the luxurious Alphard, which is like its twin. Although like this is certainly not lacking in luxury, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, while the Velfire and the Alphard have been around across different generations since the early 2000s, we're gonna be focusing on the 2015 to 2023 AH30 range. And like any good JDM car, these are available in a confusing range of different trim specs, all of which can vary in what they offer, depending on if it's a pre or post the 2018 update, through to even what dealership sold it in the first place. For example, as we film this, there are over 15 different trim specs of the Velfire and Alphard for sale here in Australia. Aside from the convoluted trim spec options, engine choices are far easier to navigate. All are petrol and you'll have a choice of a 3.5 litre V6, 2.5 litre four cylinder or 2.5 litre hybrid, all running various forms of automatic transmissions driving the front or all four wheels, depending on those confusing trim specs. You even have a choice of six, seven and eight seaters, again, depending on the model. Now, let's talk about the looks. What the hell is going on here? I feel like Toyota took how confusing the trim spec range is and then just made like a visual representation of that. Like personally, yeah, look, this isn't for me. If you're into like really blingy and ostentatious designs, you'll probably love this. If you're not into like chrome being vomited all over the front of a car, there are plenty of modifications that tone all of this down. Also, when they're on like standard wheels and at their standard ride height, it can look a little bit geeky, hence seven seat SUVs have a bit of a sexier image. The thing is, but, Fit some aftermarket wheels to this and lower it just a touch and all of a sudden it can look like the Yakuza are doing your school run. Okay, now inside, I feel like maybe Toyota missed the email stating that most people movers should feel like they're just sort of a slightly more comfortable work van because I tell you what, there are premium SUVs that could learn a thing or two from this interior. It's stunning. In saying that, design-wise, it's still a little bit bit flashy for my tastes, but yeah, impressive. Okay, let's start with the materials. First up, so much soft touch everywhere. Like this is all soft touch, lovely up here and here. Bit of scratchy plastic there, but it looks like a nice texture. I'm not sure if this is real leather, but it's so bloody soft, it feels amazing. Also, there's this kind of slight, it's almost like a dark bamboo or even like a dark ash wood grain everywhere. Excellent. This silver treatment, that feels really nice to touch and looks good. Just wow. Now ergonomics wise, firstly, these seats are so comfortable. If you're going to be screaming at your kids, you need to come from like a really nice solid and supportive place to do it. And these seats just feel amazing. Even driving position, you don't feel like you're driving a bus at all. It feels like you know, you're deep in like a nice, lovely luxury interior. And everything that you need to touch and use, like all the buttons feel right. Everything just feels good. Everything's in the right place. Spot on. Now wear and tear wise in this particular Velfire, hardly anything. There are some tiny, tiny little scratches above the door handle there, but like all the texture on the armrest is great, texture on the steering wheel is great, the leather on the seat still, as I said, really supple. Even the carpets are in great condition. Now practicality wise, get comfy, we're gonna be here for a while. First up, massive door bins here. Spot for life's filth just here. Little hidey cubby hole just here. Spot for sunglasses just up there. There's a hidden cup holder here. And even the way like the trap door works, it just it oozes luxury. Also got a bisexual cubby hole here because it opens both ways. Two cup holders here with a removable section so there can be more storage. A spot perfectly sized for your phone just there. Spot for your keys here. Another little hidey trap door there. I'm not sure what that's for but it's felt lined so it feels really nice. Excellent size glove box there. 
And I think that's it for the front. That's just the front. Wait till we get in the back. I think that's it. There is one thing, I'm not sure if it's practicality, but it's incredibly cool. As Sam is about to show you, the passenger seat has a retractable footrest. What the hell? How, that is brilliant. Amazing. Okay, now in the back seat, I'm exactly the same height as your kids, if they were 188 centimeters tall. This is in my driving position. And yet another area that a people mover destroys a seven seat SUV, because as you can see, there is so much space. It is immense, the room in here. Also, these actual seats, they're next level. Forget like a car seat. This is like business class in a nice jet or even your own private jet levels of luxury. I, I can't explain to you how comfortable this seat is. Like, look at the amount of leg room you've got. It's just, it's so comfy. Not only that, you've got retractable leg rests and also these, I'm going to slide back a little bit further. I'll see you soon. Oh, hang on, hang on. Look at this. Try and do that in like a CX-90. Like guys, think of this logically for a sec. So this, this one's the six seater. The seven seater has three seats across the back and you can get it as an eight seater as well. But as a six seater, like if you've got kids in here, you're not gonna have the kids fighting each other all the time because they have their own space. They're not taking up each other's area. Plus if they spill something, like this leather is so soft, it's just gonna wipe right off. I, I, I can't, I can't, communicate just how phenomenal this interior is. It is so, so good. Like even the materials used, like, you know, more beautiful leather here, lovely wood grain here, everything, everything you touch feels quality and nice. There's, okay, some sort of hard scratchy plastics, but not very much, but this is, this is all soft touch, more wood grain. It's just, it's phenomenal. Now, as far as wear and tear goes, as you can see, not much to speak of. Tech and features wise, here we go. So map pockets or magazine or iPad holders back there. You've got storage here, which is huge. You've got a little bit of storage here. You've got the flip down screen. You've got a sunroof. You've got your own air vents. You've got cup holders here. As I've shown you, you've got the seats that retract and do all that crazy stuff. You've got cup holders here, more cup holders here, a tray table here, but that also folds away. So if you want to get in and out, oh, that's the other thing, getting in and out of this, so easy. But if you want to go into the third row, just go through the, uh, the aisle way. Okay, now in the third row, and again, unlike a seven seat SUV, heaps of knee room, heaps of foot room. It's a bloody comfortable seat. You've got armrests. One thing I forgot to mention, all of the windows have retractable blinds. They go for the front as well. You've got two cup holders here, storage here. It's, it's, it's just immense. I'm, I'm like kind of mentally blown away. You've even got your own air vents in the third row, your own lighting. Bloody hell, this is incredible. Now, practicality in the boot, and this is where these things totally dominate a seven seat SUV, because even with the third row up, you still have a pretty decent amount of space, but obviously there's even more space under the seats, but then if you forego a spare wheel, even more space under here. Amazing. Also, if you're happy to forego a bit of leg room in the third row, these also slide forward. So even in like six or seven seat setup, all of this cargo area. Brilliant. Okay, with tech and features, I know what you're thinking. Hang on a sec, this is a grey import. I don't want to have to learn a whole other language just to change the radio station, because that's what used to happen on many grey imports. The good news is, from 2017, all of these were fitted with software that enables actually quite a few different languages. So to change from Japanese to English, it's just a simple little software update or go through some menus and find it. Also, most of these will have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but even if they don't, fitting that kind of phone connectivity is a breeze. Now, what else do they have? Okay, it's an incredibly long list of features. Even in an early base spec, you're gonna get Bluetooth connectivity, a seven inch infotainment screen, powered tailgate and sliding rear doors, tri-zone climate control, and all of this and more. But spend big and get a more recent and top spec model, and my God, Toyota have thrown everything at these. We're talking a refrigerator, a 17 speaker JBL sound system, roof mounted 4K screens for the rear passengers, premium leather upholstery, and all of this and more. Okay, now safety wise, look, the Velfire and the Alpha, they haven't been tested by ANCAP, so they don't really come with a safety rating as such, but they are equipped with a crazy array of safety equipment. But to take you through what safety gear it does have, we're gonna to cut to another voiceover, but this time it's me 
And being a family car, it's me doing the voiceover while trying to look after my mate's kids. Okay, so it has seven airbags, ABS, ESC, traction control, hill start assist, and a rear view camera and front and rear parking sensors. Plus from yes, darling. Yeah. Hobby's hungry and like, what are you doing? I'm just, yeah, I'm swinging a voiceover. I'll be two seconds and nearly done. Nearly done. Okay, okay. Okay, plus from 2018, they also included Toyota's pre-collision safety systems like pedestrian detection and lane departure alert, with steering assist, and please send help. Again, guys, for the full breakdown of all the specific equipment and tech and safety gear, jump on Redriven.com, check out that cheat sheet. Are you tired of streaky, squeaky wipers? Confused by wipers that are hard to buy and even harder to fit? Sick of paying extortionate prices for wipers? Well, introducing Wiper Tech. Purchase wipers from the leisure of your home and have them delivered straight to your door. Not only are they a piece of cake to fit, they fit perfectly and you can now enjoy streak and squeak free wipering all day. Plus, use our code and get 15% off your purchase. Now, considering this is a people mover, let's break this down into the chunks that are the most important to know. It is basically a van. Is it a bit scary to drive? Well, no, because unlike a lot of other vans, this thing does have a bonnet, so you don't feel like your legs make up like a, an integral part of the crash structure. And also, you do sit back a bit, so you kind of feel safe and secure back here. Plus, its primary role is to transport humans around as comfortably as possible. So unlike a lot of other van-based people movers, this doesn't jiggle and bounce all over the place like a work van. Like the ride quality is exceptionally good and it just, it makes you feel like safe and secure and confident on the road all the time. And look, obviously it's definitely not a sports or a performance car, but it is kind of fun in terms of handling and the turning circle is great. But it's a big van with a hybrid engine. Isn't it dangerously slow? Look, it's certainly not fast by any means, but it's also not embarrassingly slow or dangerous. Like, if you're fully loaded up with people, you are going to have to bury that right foot if you're merging into traffic or trying to overtake anything, but it does the job. For what it's supposed to do, it does the job. But it's basically a big box. Is it hard to manoeuvre? Well, no, because it's pretty much flat all around, so it's easy to judge the parameters when you're manoeuvring into a tight situation. Plus, it's got cameras and sensors all over the place, so that makes life easy. Plus, it's got glass everywhere, so it's got great visibility. Does driving it make you feel like you've given up on your own hopes and dreams? Like, no, I, like, I don't think so. Like, okay, yeah, it's pretty obvious you're driving around in a pretty flashy, small little bus, but because of kind of how extroverted the design is, it doesn't look like you're taking life too seriously. Sometimes I have noticed that when driving around, people look at it and they kind of look at it with that, like a confused look on their face, like going, what the hell is that? Plus, as we showed you, put some really nice rims on it and lower it a little bit, and it can look pretty intimidating. Also, even though some people have complained about like wind noise at high speeds, in terms of other noises, no. Like there's a lot to go wrong in here. There's a lot of interior space, but there are, in this particular one, no rattles, no squeaks, it's silent. And it's really well insulated, so you don't hear much of what's going on out there in here. Look, overall, what's it like to drive? I feel like it drives the same way that it deals with occupants on board, like with utter ease and a, a level of class and luxury. Okay, a few pros and cons here, but let's start with pros first. Underneath all this, it shares a whole lot of mechanical components with a whole bunch of other Toyota models. We're talking RAV4, Kluger slash Highlander, even some Lexus models. So when it comes to getting parts and even paying for labor, it should be pretty affordable. But then a con, unlike the guys that imported this one, we have heard of many dodgy reports of equally dodgy importers. We're talking things like falsifying documents, mucking around with odometers to wind the kilometers back. We've heard some absolute horror stories. So if you're looking at one, make sure it's come from a reputable importer. But another pro for the size of these and how big and heavy they are, with the hybrid engine, they're actually really fuel efficient. But then a con, the V6 versions of these, especially when you've got some people on board, and especially if you've got a heavy right foot, can be very, very thirsty. But another pro, the price of these. They ask around about the same price as things like the Kia Carnival and used Mercedes V-Class. But these things offer a whole level of luxury above the Kia, easily matching the V-Class. But it's a Toyota, so you get that amazing Toyota reputation for reliability, which is something the V-Class possibly lacks. And another pro that 
can possibly be a con, be very, very careful of some of the used car warranties that some dealerships will offer. Quite often they're not worth the paper they're written on. Actually, there's a whole bunch of other specific things that you do need to check out when you're buying not just one of these, but any used car. And we've made that whole process easy and enjoyable with the Ultimate Used Car Buyer's Guide. It's up there and down there. Please watch that before you buy any used car because it could save you thousands. Now before we get into what goes wrong, firstly a massive, massive thank you to the guys at Go Garage for hooking us up with this Velfire. This exact car is for sale via Go Garage right now. Click the link in the description below. Actually, for any of your great import needs, check out Go Garage here in Sydney. Also, a massive thank you to everybody in the Toyota, the Alphard and the Velfire communities for helping us research this vehicle. Honestly, without you guys, we couldn't make these videos. You guys are legends. Okay, so what goes wrong with these? Look, like many Toyotas, if they're left out in the sun or if they're not cared for, the paint can go bad, it can fade, it can crack and it can even peel off. The problem is, there's a lot of metal work going on here, so if it does need to be resprayed, that's going to cost a fortune. Now, there have been some reports of the parking sensors glitching out, and that can uh, result in the parking sensors not detecting objects, which results in people hitting things. Now, unlike this particular model, there are some reports that the rear sliding doors can be a bit noisy and sometimes even fail. The sunroof can suffer from a similar fate, either not opening and closing, and there have been a couple of reports of minor leaking as well. Then some owners have complained of excessive wind noise at high speeds, but it's pretty much a box on wheels. Surely a bit of wind noise is to be expected. Now inside there are a few isolated reports of air conditioning dramas. Either they just blow hot air or they kind of fail or glitch out. It can be a range of different things, but again, it's not a common issue. Also, some owners have complained of some infotainment and screen issues. This isn't necessarily like a Velfire and Alphard specific thing. It seems to be the infotainment systems of this generation across the entire Toyota and even Lexus range. We're talking the screens gl glitching out or locking up or just having some dramas. Generally speaking, a software update will fix the problem. And also, because because these things are just completely jammed packed with so many features and technology, if you're using that stuff and the car isn't on, it can drain the battery kind of quickly. Now guys, before we get into mechanically what can go wrong with these, if you haven't already, and if you're enjoying our content, can you hit that like and subscribe button? Just doing that helps us out so much. What really helps us out, but, is if you go and join our Patreon, the link is down there. Doing that, oh my God, we'll love you forever. Okay, mechanically, what goes wrong with the Velfire and the Alphard? I'd love to tell you, but I, I can't because I'm not qualified to. I'm not a qualified mechanic. You know who is, but it's Jim. These things are on the Toyota MC platform, which is shared by a whole bunch of other Toyotas, uh, including RAVs, some Prius, and some Lexus models too. So despite being an import, because they share a lot of those parts, uh, parts availability is never really gonna be an issue. There are some differences across the range, but overall, yeah, parts should be pretty easy to get. The four-cylinder 2AR FE and the 2AR FXE, which is in the hybrids, that's a bit of a Toyota all-rounder workhorse. It's in a bunch of different Toyota models and some Lexus models too. Look, overall, when serviced properly, they are super reliable with only a few issues, you know, water pumps and core packs, which you get on pretty much every car. The six-cylinder, the 2GR, again, that's in a bunch of different Toyota models and Lexus models. The, that thing's been around for years and statistically one of the most reliable engines ever made, actually. Overall, very few problems, although the later models are a little bit more complicated than the earlier models, but still Toyota have nailed it and they're super reliable. As for the hybrid look Toyota, again, they've done a great job here with very few common serious problems that you need to worry about. A pro tip is uh, make sure you keep the vents that allow airflow in around the battery, make sure you keep them clear of fluff and life's filth because if they block up the battery can overheat and that is detrimental to the battery performance. All the transmissions in these, the six speeds, the eight speeds and the CVTs, again look if they're serviced properly they are super reliable and you're very unlikely to have any issues. Servicing on these things is cheap. Typical Toyota, just because they're a luxury car doesn't mean they have a premium cost at all. It's all standard Toyota stuff. There are no timing belts to worry about. These things have timing chains, which are maintenance free. And if serviced well, are very unlikely to have any issues, which is unlike so many other modern manufacturers with timing chains that seem to be plagued with issues, these things, bulletproof. Although Toyotas do have a pretty high threshold for neglect, unlike some other manufacturers, and I'm looking at you, Euro, um, servicing is still a must and if you do it on time every 10 or 15,000 Ks you're extremely unlikely to have any issues at all. And I know I sound a bit like a Toyota fanboy and I can guarantee you no one is paying me for a biased opinion here 
because the truth is most Toyotas, not all, but most Toyotas are typically extremely reliable. Okay, so should you buy one? Before we answer that, if you're seriously considering buying a people mover over a seven seat SUV, congratulations. It's great to see that logic is winning over image for you. But should you buy one? Very possibly. The Velfire and Alphard pair make so much sense, with the only real potential negatives being dodgy grey importers, the immense fuel consumption of the V6 models, and the polarising looks. But make sure you do your homework, make sure it has come from a reputable importer, get the hybrid so you save some money on fuel, and maybe budget for some sexy aftermarket rims to distract from that shit show of a face. Do all that, then yeah, you should buy one. Which then obviously brings us to the question, do you buy one of these or do you still get a seven seat SUV or do you get a Kia Carnival or a Mercedes Benz V Class? Let us know in the comments. See you next time. Okay, so first of all, as well as being like the sensible choice of transport to move your kids around, then some owners of like with this, this is level, this is this is But do your homework, make sure it has come from a reputable, reputable importer. I can't say the word. But do your homework, make sure it has come from a reputable business. But make sure you do all the Honestly doing that, it helps us out. It helps us out. What the f is wrong with my brain? Oh my god. Here we go. This is the one.